Welcome back. In our sports news, the UAE have officially announced their 14-man cricket team for the International Cricket Council World Cricket League Division 2 series. The series, which will be played in Dubai in April from the 8th to the 15th, will see the UAE face teams from Uganda, Namibia, Papua New Guinea, Hong Kong and Bermuda. The matches will be held in Dubai Sports City, where the top four sides receive ICC performance grants and the top two will join the eight-team Intercontinental Cup that will start later this year. Australia's openers put on an emphatic display to follow the performance of their bowlers as they crushed Canada by seven wickets in their World Cup Group A match on Wednesday. Canada's 19-year-old opener Hiral Patel scored a whirlwind half-century, reaching 54 off 45 balls before holing out to Mitchell Johnson off Shane Watson as he went for a fourth six. After Patel's exit, Canada's run rate slowed dramatically as their captain Ashish Bagai, 39, and Zubin Zakari, 34, rebuilt the innings and took the score to the 150 mark in the 29th over before both fell to Sean Tate. Ricky Ponting looked less than pleased after a misunderstanding with one of his own side. Harvey Badwan skied a ball from Jason Kreja. Ponting called, but Steve Smith ignored the shout as he ran in and collided with his captain, who threw the safely caught ball down in disgust. Ponting was out for just seven, but the result was never in doubt, and his side passed Canada's total when Henry Ossind bowled a wide in the 35th over. Meanwhile, veteran bowling duo Kyle Mills and Daniel Vittori will not be risked by New Zealand when the Kiwis face Sri Lanka in their final World Cup group match on Friday. The pair were battling knee and quad injuries and Vice Captain Ross Taylor told reporters on Wednesday, March the 16th, that it was almost certain they would not be playing in Mumbai. Meanwhile, with both teams securing their last eight spots, a keen tussle is on the cards for the final two points on offer, which will determine their positions in the table and with it their opponents in the knockout stage. We know the Sri Lanka are a good side. Um, we've played them a lot in recent times, so uh, you know, it won't be, won't be a surprise to, to both sides. Um, they, we know each other very well. Um, but in saying that, it's, it's an important match leading into a quarter-final. Um, you know, if you if you win, you obviously get a lot more confidence and, and take some momentum into the into the into the quarterfinal. Where if you if you lose, you you know it halts it a little bit. Um, you know, leading into a quarterfinal. Chelsea manager Carlo Ancelotti said he was pleased with his team's performance despite failing to score against FC Copenhagen in the Champions League on Wednesday. Strikers Didier Drogba, Nicolas Anleka and £50 million substitute Fernando Torres all drew blanks as Chelsea progressed to the quarter-finals thanks to a 2-0 first-leg win in Copenhagen. Ancelotti did acknowledge that his team would have to improve against the likes of Barcelona, Inter Milan and Real Madrid, any of whom they could get drawn against in the quarterfinals. Asked if he thought Chelsea could win the competition, Ancelotti said his team had the quality to go all the way. Well, obviously we have to improve, above all, if you have so many chances to, to score, we have to score goals, obviously, but uh, I see that the team fresh is a good moment for us, we, we, are, we can do really, uh, we can improve really in, in the next games. Of the Champions League. Australian Open champion Novak Djokovic extended his perfect record this season to 15-0 by pounding his fellow Serb Viktor Troiki 6-0-6-1 to reach the quarterfinals at Indian Wells on Wednesday. Although Djokovic needed five match points before sealing victory in 66 minutes, he outclassed his good friends and doubles partner with a superb display of sliced backhands, crunching topspin forehands and delicate drop shots. He ended the match with a rasping backhand winner down the line before saluting the crowd by raising both arms skywards. Djokovic will face either American eighth seed Andy Roddick or Frenchman Richard Gasket in the quarterfinals. Del Potro sealed victory with his 13th ace of the match after the German had netted a forehand on the previous point. Dubai will join 128 countries across the globe in observance of Earth Hour. On its fourth year, authorities report a growing participation among businesses and residents since its participation in 2008. Dubai Electricity and Water Authority officials say this year is a much bigger event that will see a host of activities and events that aim to educate everyone about the importance of saving natural resources in addition to the Earth Hour. 
According to DEWA officials, recorded energy savings increased since Dubai first joined the observance of Earth Hour in 2008. Last year, the consumption of energy was reduced by 70,000 kilowatts per hour. This, according to DEWA, was a significant increase to the savings made in 2009, which was at 46,000 kilowatts per hour. It is hoped that this year will see more achievements towards energy conservation. We invited the private sector and the government department to participate uh, during, uh, I mean, Earth Hour. And uh, I hope that we, this year that we will be able uh, to exceed uh, the saving done last year. And uh, we expected saving around uh, uh, 200 megawatt. And I think uh, we can do it. And uh, with the support of the society and the families and uh, everyone is responsible. Cultural and heritage activities will mark the occasion at the Burj downtown where in the Earth Hour March will take place. According to Dewa officials, this year's event aimed to educate families and children as well as reiterate the importance of conserving already scarce resources beyond the 60 minutes. Even if you participated and you turned off the lights and the unnecessary equipment for one hour, is that enough? So you, when you, we are saying, what are you going to commit to yourself beyond that hour? And that's what we want to take. Take the steps, uh, uh, use less energy, turn off the, change one lamp. I mean, just think about something that you can commit to yourself. And that's what we want people to do is go beyond that hour. Officials added that businesses across the city have already pledged their commitment. Uh, actually, we are happy uh, to be one of the partners and also we are happy that the exercise will start from one of the largest uh, development, which is Burj Khalifa. Uh, so all of our developments will, 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 will have an activity uh, starting from downtown uh, Dubai, uh, uh, Arabian ranches, uh, Emirates living. Uh, all, all the community will be uh, participating. Everyone is encouraged to join in the global action to save energy between 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Since an hour we spend saving energy will contribute significantly to saving our planet and ensuring a sustainable future for everyone. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. And finally this evening, with art in the air across the UAE, art enthusiasts may be interested to know that researchers in Belgium have discovered that a complex chemical reaction is darkening some of Van Gogh's brightest paintings. The multinational team has established that the tones of the paintings have changed dramatically over the years and that the great Dutch artist may not be pleased with how they've turned out. The effect is causing concern in the art world and has brought together a team of scientists from four countries to investigate. They are con they're concentrating on the works from Van Gogh's time in the south of France, where he, where he produced some of his brightest, most colourful paintings, including his iconic sunflowers. But it is also the period most endangered, according to Cohen Yassens, an analytical chemist at Antwerp University in Belgium. Yassen says Van Gogh is not the only painter whose work is going darker. Cézanne or Renoir are just also on the list. The UAE National Centre for Meteorology and Seismology has warned seagoers to be extra careful if they choose to go near the waters over the weekend, as strong winds are due to create rough weather conditions at sea. And with that, let's take a look at the international and local weather forecast for tomorrow. And before we head out, here are the top stories again. Deputy ruler of Dubai inaugurates Dubai International Horse Fair. His Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum launches first book on Dubai's civil aviation industry. Tokyo worries about nuclear leakage and supply shortages. And the DIFC looking to set up a real estate fund.
Well, that brings us to the end of the bulletin. As always, please feel free to get in touch with us at news at city7tv.com. Why not call us on 04367 And please do join our Facebook page. From the entire news team, it's goodbye for now.